So I was saying that this work is very much related to Germany, the country where I live. Uh, and it's a kind, I started it uh, three years ago, it's a series, an ongoing series, but this piece particularly I produced in Amman. It's, uh, I'm a bit bothered about the kind of hypocritical discourse that is present in Germany, but in general in the Western countries, which are very moralizing toward the so-called uh, global south, uh, but especially in matters of environmental matters. And in Germany it's true that they radically close after Fukushima the nuclear uh, power, power points, but uh, the mining digging for coal is continuing and even increasing, which is in contradiction with all the agreements that they did in France and before. Um, but this is like, so it was even if, I was, how can I say, if, even if you use an electric car or electric energy, Supposedly, what is behind it is the coal energy. It is taken from the coal energy, at least in Germany, but I guess uh, in many parts of the world it's the same. And I use the tradition of uh, reading in the sedimentation of coffee and tea, but also there is a very old tradition in the old Germanic, uh, before Christian, it's a pagan tradition, is to read in the guts of the enemies to see the future. And I wanted to see in this element, which is like telling the history of uh, Earth, not even humanity, because it's before us, to see the future somehow. And it's open to everyone to interpret. Yeah. I have a question. Okay, why is this to be painting? Are you ready to be by conversing with more by speaking? Ah, yeah, and that's the technical part that we're going to say, which is also very important. Um, so it was, uh, no, it just stretched. Because you know, the layers of uh, powder have already sedimented on the canvas, and then it was 3D, and then I took everything out from the bottom, and I stretched it. And so this is, this painting is the memory of the canvas when it was 3D. So all of this, so if you see this light part, it means that it was above. These parts where you have much more sedimentation, it means that it's like a fatty. <clears throat> and the texture is uh, many layers of paper, so it gives us very organic, it looks also a bit like our veins or like a leaf. And I was interested in this contrast, but at the same time it's not a contrast it's because coal is made of these organic elements. So, uh, just briefly, this piece is called, that I was talking about, this stretch fur. And uh, it's the most personal piece in this exhibition. Because it's inspired by my discussions with my, with my grandfather, my Ukrainian grandfather, when I was a child. And he was always telling me about his personal experiences uh, that he went through from the uh, Ukraine when it was within the Russian Empire. Then he lived the revolution. Uh, of course, the Second World War, Soviet time completely, and the time of independence. And everything what he used to narrate to me had sometimes a very big or a small discrepancy. In any case, it wasn't conformed to what you would read in the books, whether it is the books that you find in the Soviet, uh, official Soviet books, or the books that you would find from the view of the West. But also, this I didn't say in Arabic, but that's it, I cannot repeat myself, so you're lucky, I'll tell you this in English. When I grew up in Tunisia, I also lived in a completely different Slav world. Uh, and that is because my mom is Ukrainian, as I said, but we met a diaspora who came, they flew from the Russian, from, from what came, became Soviet Union during the October Revolution. So my mom, you can say, is right, very proletarian. I come from a proletarian background. But in Bizerta, the city where I grew up, there was this nobility that flew from uh, the revolution, and we were very close to them. So there you can also see the emulation, like, you overcome the history and the separations of. And they used to tell us a completely different history about Russia and Ukraine. And it also, my mom was telling me, it was opening up her mind about her own country and her own self in a way that she would have never expected. So that's also something that influenced me very much, very little, putting, questioning what history is and what is the official plot. Um, so that's why I was saying this is the piece that's very personal, let's say. What I basically did is work with my hair and my mom's hair. And someone asked me a good question, why is it the hair? Because 
First of all, I'm somehow obsessed with her. It's also very present in my work often. But also because it is this material with which you can literally measure time, the time of your biological time, uh, along with your names. And it is also used in the archaeology. Uh, archaeologues can literally measure exactly the time of mummies and things like that through hair. Uh, and so this idea was you create an artificial line. There is no line, actually, apart from the short ones. And the line is always cut. Again, there was a very interesting remark with the frames. I did it, of course, on purpose, that the frames, you almost have the feeling you want to put them on their place. But if you put them, then you, the lines get, you, you, you don't get this continuity. So in any case, you always see that this continuous line is forced, because every hair is also rebellious. It's curly, I have curly hair. So it's like they're taking their own direction, they want to be what they want, and we are really stretching them. So they're almost a painful gesture of straight, stretching the hair in order to create this continuity. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Uh, this is, you, you said this is your hair, right? And my mom. In your mom's hair. Uh, is it, uh, did you put it in one uh, frame and you started uh, changing? Uh, shape or, or is it all your hair and your mom's hair, all the, all the paintings? And is it scanned or it's real hair that we can see? No, it's not scanned, it's a print, so it's a monotype. And it is uh, made with real hair, with my, and every piece is a different hair. Because once, what I do is once you, uh, so it's a lot of hair. I cut my hair mom to my mom to at the time. And these are only the ones that work, because in order to get that one, you need to sew money that you throw away. Anyways, um, so yeah, it is stretched hair and then covered with ink for the, like the ink use for etching, and then it goes through the press and creates. And, and then you have to throw it because once you have, you have ink, it would be too thick. So every time you put it, you're good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We we'll continue. So yes, there is another piece now behind you. It looks like an innocent uh, museum bench. So this is the nervous bench. And uh, I noticed uh, very often where people are sitting in a restful position in a cafeteria or especially, especially in airports, places where they are waiting. Suddenly when the body is at rest, there is an inner stress that is translated through the movement of the legs. So I did something probably not too politically, <laughs> but I think these people while they're moving without their face, of course, and then translated this movement into sound and the sound into rhythm. So once you sit, there's a system, a whole system in the... It's an existing bench, so I, it's a series also. When I come to a museum or a gallery space, whatever, I take the original bench in the space and make the intervention in it so that it becomes invisible. And uh, when you sit, it starts to the rhythm that you feel into the rhythm of the stress of the people that uh, you don't know, but you have them in your body. It's not important to know them or not. They're in you. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a work uh, a bit about the tension, permanent tension that we're living in, the stress that is contagious, and again about this illusion of being individual. I don't think there is a separation of individuality. We're all somehow linked. Sooner or later, we will affect each other. And this goes also to governments huh? and to countries. You cannot do whatever problems, even if it's far away, and think you're going to be okay and whatever. It, it will come to you someday. So this is physically, literally, you feel how it comes to you. Did you make the uh, Did you make the mm -hmm. No, this is a piece that I don't know. Is it done a comparison with <laughs> No, no. But I I took uh, pieces from uh, in Germany, in Tunisia, and yeah. But from people from different nationalities. So in Germany we have the it's not German actually. <laughs> So the last piece is uh, this room, and you see a kind of a monochrome. So uh, I was saying that the word Das Kapital Epilogue that we see in that space is really probably the, the outcome of this residency and my stay. In yes, it's in the adjacent room. You will see that fence. And it's a great coincidence, but I don't really believe in coincidences. I believe in the universe and that things that have to happen will have to happen. And while I was having a beautiful walk with uh, Muhammad, 
trying to see what's happening in Amman, trying to you know, get a feel of the city. We found this place, we started everything with the color. This is a series of paintings that is called The Color of Time. And um, I collect pieces of paint from old buildings. Um, usually, anyone who comes to live in a place or new institutions, they paint the walls. And if you see the, the, the chemical structure of the paint, let's say 100 years ago, it's completely different from the chemical structure today. And also the layers of the color, they are different. So uh, I decided, this is a series, as I say, it's not the first one, to mix all of these chopped paintings pieces and create a grind them and create a pigment. And with this pigment, create a monochrome color. And this color would be unique. It narrates the history of this particular place, but at the same time, you can never reproduce it because it is with the specificity of this place. And the first thing that has attracted me to do the piece that we see behind was a wall, a very old wall uh, of a destroyed home. And we went to ask the people, what is the story of this place? So they started to tell us that this home is destroyed because a woman had a building there and she had a dream that her father told her there is gold under, in, in, underneath your house. So she believed in it. Unbelievable, but she believed in it, but she did, apparently. And she decided to take authorization, official authorization, and to dig for the gold. So the police came and even the army. This is the whole dialogues you hear the people narrating, different variations of the same story. And she destroyed the house, and they apparently didn't find. Some say they found, but most of the people are in accordance that they didn't find. The thing is that according to the Jordan law, the distance, there's not enough distance from the size to the neighbors to rebuild the house. So she didn't find the gold, she destroyed the home. People who were living there had to leave, and she paid them a lot of money to leave, because it was for rent, and they cannot rebuild. So there's this empty space and this fence that has attracted us, because it's not a fence that is separating anything. There isn't a separation between the inside and the outside, public and private, it's just within this empty place. And it is holding just on some wire, so it is in such a precarious, fragile situation. And just made me think with this anecdote about our actual situation in the world. We are continuing to take and to use the resources, which are not really bringing us further, rather, I would say, behind with the climate change, for those who believe in the climate change. And uh, the governments don't seem to protect the interests of their own people. They are more like into protecting the lobbies and their own interests. And soon, if we continue like this, there won't be much to protect. So I felt like this fence is the allegory representing our time, the end of an era, the capitalist era. So that's why the work is called, I'm not extreme leftist, but it just feels like that. <laughs> das Kapital Epilog. Yeah, let's go. <laughs>